Welcome to the second segment of the Shape Discovery series. In this video you will learn what spiritual gifts are, what they are not, and most importantly, how you can discover what your unique spiritual gifts are. At first, this whole topic of spiritual gifts may seem mysterious, complicated, and difficult. But in fact, the opposite is true. God has given us wonderful gifts, and He doesn't make it difficult to discover and use them. Sadly, people made it difficult for themselves to understand and use their God-given spiritual gifts. Let's start by clarifying what they are not. First, your spiritual gifts are not the same as your personality traits. Second, spiritual gifts are not the same as natural talents. You can be a very talented architect, salesperson, a manager, but those are not spiritual gifts. Third, spiritual gifts are not the same as the fruit of the Spirit described in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit reveals Christ's contribution to our character, while our spiritual gifts reveal the contribution of the Spirit to us with which we are able to minister in God's kingdom in our own unique way. So what are spiritual gifts? Let's define a spiritual gift as a God-given special ability given to every believer at conversion by the Holy Spirit to share His love and strengthen the body of Christ. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10 that God is the gift giver. God has given gifts to each of you from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Manage them well so that God's generosity can flow through you. I love how Oz Genius, in his book The Call, talks about the role of giftedness. Oz says the purpose of giftedness is stewardship and service, not selfishness. God gives us these special abilities for specific reason. Spiritual gifts only work in spiritual ways, designed to bring great color and clarity to your life. They can only be used to the full potential when empowered by the Holy Spirit, who dwells in the life of every believer. And only those who have entered into a personal relationship with Christ have these gifts. The spiritual gifts God gives you are neither for you nor about you. They weren't given to boost your self-image or to serve as some kind of special reward from God. They were not given to raise you up to some level of greatness or success. They are yours for the purpose of blessing the body of Christ, the church. That is why you need to be part of a church family. Discovering your spiritual gifts is not the ultimate goal. Using them to bless others is. The best news ever is God gives gifts to everyone, not just special people. There are no special qualifications needed no special level of maturity required, not even a particular time span needed in your journey with Jesus. If you are a believer, then you have the Spirit living in you. If you have the Spirit living in you, then you have 
spiritual gifts to use for God's glory and the benefit of others. Enjoy the next step of your journey. Welcome to our SHAPE discussion groups. And um, I have uh, three other uh, good uh, friends of mine uh, to discuss the spiritual uh, component of the SHAPE. Um, and uh, let me introduce you to William Herrera. Please uh, come onto the stage. Uh, so awesome. Uh, Will, thank you for your time. Also, uh, Patricia um, Antas, thank you so much uh, for being with us. And uh, Karen McCutcheon, uh, welcome. And uh, thank you, uh, team, for your contribution to the, the SHAPE uh, resource so that we can yeah, understand it a little bit better and um, uh, break down um, uh, some of the concepts and make them a little bit simpler um, uh, so that we can we can explore uh, some of the hardest questions. Here's our first question since we are discussing the spiritual gifts. The first question is why is it important for people to know their spiritual gifts after all? Something that will be much more unique than for someone else. So there are gifts that each of us have that the other person won't. So yeah, it just helps us to work out how God's made us in a special way. Mm. And I also believe that it brings purpose. Uh, a lot of people, they start asking, what is my purpose? What God is expecting from me? So when you know your spiritual gift, it helps you to understand what God yeah. wants from you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I love it. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I also like the fact that you know, as you explore your spiritual gifts, it gives you a stronger grounding in the identity that God's given you, um, and helps you to feel closer and connected to Him in a, in a unique way. Yes, yeah. I like love the idea of the clues. Yeah, spiritual gifts are somewhat like clues from God. If He yeah. gives a spiritual gift, it means He's got a purpose for it. In some way, it's, it's an indication of what he wants you to do. So it's one way of discovering, like, uh, will you start? Well, it's really um, about discovering uh, the purpose in life. Of course, if God gives you the spiritual gift, it means there is a purpose. There is there is a purpose for your life. Mm -hmm. That's how he, he uses um, yeah. uh, then us. A lot of our life, is, as well as God's crafting it, is the way that we're going to influence other people for him. And so, yeah, it's kind of figuring out, okay, maybe there's this kind of a, a gifting in me and then how that's going to be a blessing for someone else too. Mm. And also it can change because everything's yeah. going to depend on how you are applying. So if you don't use it, it doesn't mean that you lose it, but it's not, it's going to become like more dormant. It's going to sleep inside of you. But the more mm. you use it, the more God is going to bless you. And whatever um, situation you are, he provide you with the right spiritual gifts for that situation. Yay. And I think as well, you know, as a body of believers, it's important for us to know our gifts so that we can be part of the work that God is doing. You know, it's all about what the what the Spirit is doing through the body of believers. And so if we don't know our gifts, um, you know, we're not sure of how we're contributing. And that builds teamwork. When you all know how to play the game, um, we can all be a stronger team together. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love the word team because what that suggests as well is we all have different positions. We've all bring different qualities to the table. So if you're in a church or a serving capacity and you're asked to do a job, I think a great response is first, what is my spiritual gift and how does that align with what I'm being asked to do? Not mm. always is an invitation from God. So work out, okay, is this alongside my spiritual gift? And that can sometimes help with our response. Mm -hmm. We complement one another. We complement. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yes, just go. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, I love that concept as well, William, because sometimes we're not very assertive about saying no. And I think knowing your spiritual gifts also gives the opportunity to say, hey, I'd love to serve, but I know that, that working in this area is going to drain me because it's not my yep. gifting and it's not something that energizes me, um, but I'd love to serve in this way. So it helps us to kind of craft that journey and, and have a better experience for us and those around us because we bring energy. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. And, and, and what a way to look at it when we can say, hey, Victor, I, instead of saying you'd be great at this job, you say, I notice God has really given you this gift, Karen, mm -hmm. uh, Patricia. So, yeah, we can be using this language more of really what God's already doing. 
than someone yes. else. Yeah, yeah. So you making it all so easy and wonderful, yeah. At the same time, here's the second question. A lot of people really struggle identifying, you know, their spiritual gifts, and there's a little bit of confusion. Okay, which gifts and how? And so, why is there so much confusion and misunderstanding about spiritual gifts? And I think a few of us are, are pastors here, or, or, or leaders who equip others. So, well, what's your experience telling you? I think sometimes yeah. people get confused. Sorry, William, uh, no, because no. they mix up about their abilities and also the spiritual gifts. Abilities are mm. things that we are born with, and spiritual gifts will come uh, while we uh, we start facing different challenges and situations in life. So God always. He said he will equip us. And so I believe spiritual gifts is that equipping. And um, yes, and that ability we were born with. And then you can develop that uh, along mm -hmm. your life. So sometimes people get confused about abilities and spiritual gifts. And always remember, spiritual gifts is about God. It's not about yeah. you. It's about mm -hmm. serving him and complete, completing his work that he has called you to do. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you almost got, were going to say complaining there, Patricia. <laughs> It does, it does pop up as the flesh, you know, with, with the calling. Um, I, I, I love this. It, it's a gift from God. Um, I, I think like often when I was looking at how a spiritual gift works with me, I often connotate it with those who are up the front in church. So those who are teaching amazing Bible studies, who, you know, preach great sermons. is like, oh yeah, of course there's a spiritual gift there. But in obedience to the Holy Spirit, if he's working and he does far beyond anything that we, we can see, then it means every person has some some portion that he's giving us. So it's I guess it's it's believing in mm. God's potential in my life too, that every person can is receiving a gift from him. Mm. Mm. And I think I think to to kind of put some foundation in it a little bit more as well, it's like we as we see that the spiritual gifts we've given for the purpose to grow God's kingdom and to, to grow the, the body of believers and, and grow the strength of, you know, the way that we are moving in the community. And so I think that if we can ask ourselves, you know, is this gift something that God needs right now? Yeah. Then it's most likely to be a spiritual gift. And we do change over the years, you know, circumstances do change. Um, and you'll see that new giftings pop up depending on what the challenges are, like Patricia said. Um, and yeah. so I think the confusion around it is possibly people haven't um, taken the time or, or had learnings around what's the difference between gifts and abilities and the needs of the church. And I think more, as we have more conversations, it becomes more transparent and people understand more about the differences. Can I share like a, an experience that I'm going through right now? Like I'm changing churches. I, I just left one church and going to another. And being this not another church, they have so many talents. A lot of people that have amazing spiritual gifts and abilities. And my group that is coming with me to this new church, they said, Trisha, I don't know how I'm going to serve because their gifts are a lot bigger, like a lot better than mine. And I said to them, stop comparing yourself to others. It's not about what I can do better than you, but God has called you for a reason. And I'm sure we can find a place for ourselves in this church. And God is going to show us, but you need to be open so the Holy Spirit can work through you and to show you which area is lacking or you can complement in that local church. It's not because mm -hmm. that church is full of talented people that means that, oh, I can't really serve, I'm not really good. God has called each one of us for a purpose. And all of us has different personalities and it's going to complement wherever mm -hmm. you go. So stop comparing yourself mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. others because mm -hmm. you are unique. Mm -hmm. Preach it. Yes, and that will that will uh, confuse people even more. Yeah, if they start comparing their uniqueness with uh, with others. So to, to um, go to our next question and look at um, the the whole discovery journey and experience. How can it be easier and clearer? What will help people make the discovery? of their spiritual uh, gifts more clearer and easier and you are well, I, believe, <laughs> I believe that first we need to pray uh nothing in this spiritual journey uh it's about us so we need to spend some time with god and really open our hearts so the holy spirit can speak to us and show us what is the right 
uh, directions. And I think we should spend some time looking for the resources that we have available. And one of them is these. It is the shape. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's the shape uh, program. Because nice it will help. <laughs> that will help. Oh, one of these things is it. not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> and it will help you to go through and understand every single step and opening your mind to understand so many different areas that you can put together and understand what is your calling in ministry. Yes, yeah. yes. And I, I love the, um, I don't know, there's the Johari window kind of concept where there's stuff that I know, stuff that I can't see that other people know, and there's also stuff that I don't know and other people don't know. So I think as well as talking to God about it, it's the whole thing as well of, you know, what are the things that people are confirming in me as well? You know, I might think this is a gift, but if it's not confirmed by other people around me, um, is it really a spiritual gift or is it just something that I you know, think I'd like to do. And so mm. really having strong mentors or strong spiritual um, people around you who can say, I see God's fingerprints on you and I really believe, um, you know, this is something that he's gifted you. And that can help with the confidence as well to try. Um, yes. And it can make it easier to to start to understand what I'd like to try and get better at. Yeah. I love the trying idea. We just have to be willing to put ourselves out there and the spirit may do something different in a season or he may just be teaching us, oh, it's not quite this one. It might be another. Um, there are some online surveys that I found to be the most helpful um, because they have like a really comprehensive uh, look at all the different ones that we have in the Bible. And it's more than that because each list of spiritual gifts in the New Testament is different, which yeah. teaches us that there is no limit of how the spirit wants to name or use them in us. And they're not yeah. gender or place specific at all either. So, yeah, yeah. stay available. And William, what I, and what I like about that, it's because it's going to test your trust in God. Mm. Because you need to trust in Him and believe. Like sometimes you feel like I don't feel like I don't think that this is going to be the best way for me to serve God. But God is telling you, like I am offering you the gift. It is like yeah. you making yourself available and putting your trust in God. And that's what this is all about. It's like, again, not about me, but yes. God equipping yeah. you to what he's calling you to do. Fantastic. Let me recap real, real quick. Um, again, the, the best way what I heard was to really start with a prayer. Focus. It's not about me. It's about God. And focus makes a huge difference. It is about God and what he gives us. Uh, explore various inventories. Um, uh, and obviously there is there is an excellent inventory here in this resource, yes. <laughs> Stop it, you three. <laughs> uh, I also heard you say uh, trial in experiment. Also hear what others um, are sharing with you uh, in terms of their feedback and how they see the effectiveness of, of your service. And also your own uh, gut feeling and your also mm. fulfillment and satisfaction, yeah, when you um, actually perform uh, one or the other spiritual gift. There's this yeah, main... Oh, sorry. sorry, Victor. I was just going to jump in and say, yeah, when do you feel the most alive when you're yes. serving? That would be a really good clue, you know. How do I feel the most yes. energized and passionate? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. So these are a few uh, excellent, excellent contributions. So thank you so much um, uh, for uh, really helping me unpack uh, those those questions. I'm sure the viewers will continue to unpack, whether in their groups or even if you are viewing this by yourself, you can either reach out to someone um, or just form a group and um, discuss these questions with them or even review them on your own. Uh, but may God um, continue to bless you and lead you as uh, you continue to discover God's purpose for your life. Thank you so much, uh, Will. Uh, thank you, uh, Patricia and Karen, for your um, help here to start scratching the surface to unpack those questions. I hope you can now understand the great importance of spiritual gifts and the discovery of the gifts in your own spiritual experience. But understanding without experiencing is like seeing presents under the Christmas tree without actually opening them. 
unwrapping your spiritual gifts will help you to see the masterpiece God has created you to be and discover the wonderful ways He has made it possible for you to live a meaningful life of service to others. So here are the two keys that will help you discover your spiritual gifts. The first key to discovering your gifts is to examine what gifts you think you might have by utilizing great resources like shape and taking the spiritual gifts inventory. But it's not enough. The second key is of greater value, which is experimenting and serving in various roles to see which gifts bring the greatest fulfillment for you and the greatest results for God. Doing the inventory helps you to identify your potential gifts, but it cannot take the place of actually experimenting with different types of service. Your experimenting actually helps you to either confirm or negate your discovery in the spiritual gifts inventory. Now that you have identified some possible spiritual gifts God has given you, start to express them by serving others around you. When we serve in areas that best match our giftedness, we experience greater fulfillment and see greater fruitfulness for God. On the other hand, when we serve outside our giftedness, we usually end up frustrated and fatigued. Did you catch that? There are two indicators that will confirm for you that you are serving in the areas of your giftedness. They are the fulfillment you experience and the fruitfulness you see as you serve. So stay determined and courageous as you experiment by trial and error until you hit the bull's eye, so to speak, and find your ideal place in God's kingdom. Remember, at this stage, your goal is to understand the biblical truth about the spiritual gifts and complete the inventory so you can have three potential spiritual gifts as identified. You can complete the inventory on pages 24 to 26 and sum it all up. As you complete it, just transfer the three highest scored spiritual gifts on the spaces provided on page 26. Stay the course and remain courageous.